What is going on, Governor? It's just cool here, and today we're gonna be showing you the optimal use for Guan Yu in Canyon. Hello, my friends, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about the optimal use for Guan Yu in Canyon because guess what? He's not a simple Sun Tzu replacement. Everybody was kind of losing their minds. They're like, of course he's not a Sun Tzu replacement. But if you look at the comments before Guan Yu was actually released in the game, everybody thought that perhaps you could swap Guan Yu for Sun Tzu and do more damage and be more effective. That is simply not the case. Um, Guan Yu is an attacking commander, which means he needs to be in a backline position in order to be effective if we're talking about a canyon lineup. If we're talking about open field fighting, which is super relevant too, then yes, Guan Yu is good, but not the commander you want to be tanking the damage from the enemy. You prefer a different commander, go and do that. This commander is all about doing big damage. So we're going to do a couple things. We're going to review the changes we've made to our canyon lineup in order to really take advantage of Guan Yu as a max level commander, but not max skills yet. At some point, we'll maybe max him to be determined. And the other thing we're going to do is showcase other Guan Yu combinations that are in use in my kingdom. And I think what we'll do is spend at least some of our canyon currency in this video. Not all of it, but a bunch of it. Because uh, gosh, would I feel silly if I get to the end of KVK and I haven't spent it. Awkward. So um, let's talk about Guan Yu. Many people said the build that we had here was the problem. I disagree. I think this build is great. I think that the way I had him paired and that the way... I was using him was not quite right. I had Guan Yu paired with a commander that doesn't do damage, so several of these talents were not useful. I was pairing, you know, Guan Yu with Alexander the Great. Both awesome commanders, not the most synergistic pair for obvious reasons. Guan Yu is all about doing big damage, and Alexander the Great is more tanky and buffy. So you, you do want the rage generation, which you're getting here and here, um, but we can do better. So let me just jump right into the canyon uh, team that we're now using, and I'll share some thoughts here. So I'll jump into campaign, lost canyon, defense. This is our new configuration for lost canyon um, I'll say that we shamelessly stole this from our Alliance member, Negan, who is using a very similar configuration, and we just, like, said, yoink, and we did kind of the same thing. Uh, he's got a Constantine. I don't. But let's talk about what we're doing to make use of Guan Yu effectively. First of all, you can see here we've got Guan Yu in the back line. Uh, the reason that that's important is that Guan Yu, again, is not a tank. He's a DPS unit. Uh, and even though you can use infantry to tank, we're actually pairing with Esong to do huge amounts of damage to give some amount of extra rage gen. The two have a tremendous amount of synergy, and we already know that Esong really doesn't care all that much about having archers. Yes, archers are better, but the buff there is important, but not so important that you wouldn't use him in other pairings. It's a part of the reason why I think Esong is one of the very best legendary commanders in Rise of Kingdoms, because he is so strong and so versatile. Uh, commanders like Attila Takeda are very, very strong, exceptionally strong in one thing, and that is rallies, but pretty weak in my estimation in a bunch of other areas, but let's continue on. Um, Ethelfled is the second pairing, <laughs> and this time I'll actually tap on Ethelfled where we have Mehmed as the secondary. This is the pairing I feel the weirdest about. Um, the thing I like about this is that it's very high DPS, and you get to bring lots of troops, and the talents on Ethelfled make it so that she reduces the amount of skill damage she's taking pretty substantially. This pair is deceptively good, and they're now on my front line. Um, also on the front line, and I flashed this on the screen earlier, is a pairing that is a little bit more synergistic than what we were doing with Alexander the Great before, which is that now we have two commanders that do not take 
or do not deal, rather, skill damage. They both do normal attack damage, so we switched our build on Alexander the Great to go all in on just doing normal attack damage, um, and now we've got a partner for Joan of Arc that kind of makes a little bit more sense, and I feel like this is tanking decently in the front line. We did want to keep, by the way, our Joan of Arc roughly in this position to offer buffs to all three of these marches, and if this march were to creep down, then it'll get buffed as well. Okay, the next march that is in here is still our Khan. And a lot of people are like, you shouldn't use Khan. Khan is a gross rage engine. Absolutely bonkers. I'll put a card up in the top for like an ancient video I made talking about how much damage Khan can do and just how much rage you can generate. It's out of control. And to go along with the rage generating insanity, look who shows up over here. It's Sun Tzu. The best epic in Rise of Kingdoms, Slam Dunk, followed probably by Joan of Arc. So, bonus tip in this video, if you were wondering, best epic? Right here. Right here in Sun Tzu. We're bringing full cavalry, and the thing that we like about this march is it is basically machine gunning AoE damage, um, as well as high damage single target uh, damage, to uh, just all over the place. It's, it is phenomenal. Um, this march is going to angle down looking down so it's going to position roughly here when it meets and it's going to be hitting aoe kind of like this um, and that is very effective guan yu is going to do something similar hitting kind of this way and then also because we have esong he's also going to hit aoe back over here which is really quite strong so that's why we've kind of configured this the way that we have. Um, there are some other commanders that you could pair with Guan Yu that would be very effective. Um, Guan Yu with Sun Tzu, a solid pair. Guan Yu with Osman, a solid pair. Uh, because Osman really wants the rage that um, you get from the skill tree. You're going to have a lot of troops. You're going to do a lot of damage. They both want to do a lot of damage. I think it's a fine pairing. Um, if we actually jump back to the commander screen, and I could just walk through a few options here for commanders you might choose as a secondary to Guan, because I think optimally he would be the primary because of the way that his first skill um, works, sort of cutting your damage in half if you become the secondary, not worth it to me. Um, you know, so if you got the stars, you want to star him up. So, you know, commanders you could pair with here would include Freddy. Um, Freddy has got high damage, some healing and sustain. A number of people said, just cool, you should try Freddy. Again, I, I think I prefer Esong as my pick here for that AoE, um, and that AoE is really crucial. Uh, continuing on, you could use a Constantine. I don't love it. I feel like Constantine would be better used elsewhere. Um, Yes, you machine gun out the skills, but then Constantine has to be the primary. So there's some anti-synergy here. For the same reason, I don't like using Alexander the Great with Guan. I think Constantine falls short in the same way. Of course, the obvious choice here is Leonidas. <sighs> Leonidas is just insane with Guan. Um, are they busted? Are they broken? I don't know. I haven't used them. I haven't even battled that much against them. There aren't that many people that have both of them expertise. At this point, it doesn't make sense to have both of them expertise because we haven't had all the Mighty Governor and Wheel Cycles yet. Um, other commanders you could pair with include uh, Boudicca for the Rage Generation, if you're a free-to-play player. Um, you also, let's see here, actually that, that's the big one. Um, you could do Olji Mundok, that would be fine. Uh, the stats from Olji Mundok would be very, very good. Um, but, you know, the obvious, the obvious slam dunk pick would be Guan Sun Tzu or Guan Isong or Guan Leonidas. Now, if we just get a look here at what other people are doing in our canyon, um, we can see here we've got Guan Leo. At the next level, we've got Guan Isong. At the next level, Guan Isong. At the next level, Guan Martel. Interesting choice. I don't know that I love that. I don't know that I love that, but they're in fourth. Something is working obviously. Um, continuing on, Guan Leo. So you see here, Guan, another Guan Martel. Fascinating. Fascinating. I guess what it's offering is some amount of sustain, some amount of resiliency to that march. Um, 
The problem is that I don't think you're generating rage fast enough that when Martel puts up his shield as the secondary, there's a damage boost that you get for four seconds, and I don't think you'll have that when the next active skill of Guan Yu happens. Um, Negan also using the Guan Yi song. Gaius, Guan, Leo, and Hell's Door. No Guan. No Guan. So there's the first one. And here's a Guan Su. Guan Su. Top 10. Guan Su. Right here. Right here, people. So um, that gives you a sense of what people are doing with Guan. And they are, they are in the top 10. Perhaps that is working effectively. I would argue that it is. Guan has a role that's very strong in Canyon as a primary. And I think the three pairs that you can use most effectively are Su then Isong, then Leo. That would be my recommendation. Now, I promise you toward the end of this video that we would do some stuff in the Canyon shop. We've got over a million currency right now, which is pretty nuts. Um, I'm sort of torn as to what I will pick up from the Canyon shop. I really want the material crates very, very badly. Um, we really need materials. At the same time, there's a little bit of fear that I have that some of these patterns will become available now and then disappear potentially from the game. Um, and that makes me a little concerned about not picking up the patterns, whereas I could theoretically buy my way in the material choice chest at some point. And that costs a lot of money, but like you could do it. You can never buy your way ever into these patterns ever again outside of this KVK. So I'm torn because I have so many of these patterns already. And I don't even know, like... I. I'm going to make my first legendary like three months from now. <laughs> and I've got like three or four other legendary patterns just like waiting. So what I'm going to do now, I think is I'm going to pick up Shio's Return. We're going to get these boots. And we waited toward the end of KVK to see if, you know, there's always, you always wait to see if there's more information. Okay. This is, this is like a theme, right? We expertise to Tilla Takeda. At the last minute, we waited until we had the most information possible before making a decision. In this case, the information we're using is the information that there isn't some new commander or new thing that's happening in the game where, like, the Eternal Might is the, the Alpha and the Omega of equipment, right? Or, like, you know, all of a sudden, Shio's Return is just totally busted. Or, you know, there's not, like, you know, new level 65 and we need experience tomes desperately. We wait till the last moment to be effective still be effective with our spending, but then and only then do we make that spend. So I'm going to grab Shio's return now, snagging all 29 of those. Whew, there goes a lot of currency, baby. And we're definitely going to get the elite equipment material crates. The reason that I strongly advocate for the elite tier is that they are actually priced cheaper per unit of material than the green and the gray tier. Um, it is a cheaper price per material if you compare them, um, you know, in sort of an apples to apples way. So we're going to grab all of these now. Bada boom. That leaves us enough currency that we could still do Eternal Night if we want it. We could. Um, I don't think we do at this time. We'll wait. We'll see. Maybe we will. Um, I, I, again, tend to err on the side of picking up the patterns so that I have them. Um, however, if these are going to show up every KVK for like quite some time, I'm inclined to not get them, at least the second pattern, and instead to just double down on material crates. That to me seems like a really strong route and is very likely for what I'll do with the remainder of my Canyon currency and, you know, the remainder of the currency we'll pick up in the coming days. Um, and there are only two days left in KVK. So now we're going to go in and we are going to spend down, uh, or rather uh, actually use these 20 elite equipment material crates that we got. I'm hoping we get stone. I'm hoping we get bone. Those are the things we ultimately need to craft Skolas' Lucky Coin. So let's hit max and see what we're getting for all that canyon currency. Bada boom. Three stone, no bone. Awkward. You could say that we got boned. Is that a bad, bad joke right now? Is that not funny? Um, we did get five crystal, which is really good. Um, why am I interested in crystal? 
let me just show you uh, a couple things that I think I want to go craft at some point. So if I jump into the blacksmith, um, yeah, wow, not a lot of things we can craft at this exact moment. However, um, I do have um, an Ian's choice. 8% archer attack is kind of nuts. I love the itemization on Ian's choice. It's all in almost on archer stats. Um, so, you know, I do think that sacred grips, also good. Might just craft these. Might craft those instead. Um, do I have... Oh, I don't actually have Ian's choice. Both of these patterns, however, both of these patterns, however, use the crystal, which is what I was keying into. Um, I guess this is the one I would have to make because I actually have the pattern here. Um, and it is only, for, only 40 legendary materials. Um... And then also the cloth is really good for that reason. Um, so, you know, the 5% infantry defense would be great. The 5% archer attack would be great. This is very good on a leadership commander. Um, it's very good on a garrison commander. This is a piece of gear I like. The reason I also really like the boots is that it's the least amount of materials to actually get 5% of stats onto a commander. Um I think it's unlikely I'm going to have them on a commander that needs both the infantry and the archer uh, stats. However, I'll point out over here that I really like that this piece of gear is using uh, ebony and leather, which is a set of materials that I'm not actually using anywhere else. So we've sort of crafted a combination of things that don't use the same materials. So we're going to want to work on the lucky coin, which is going to be our stone and our bone. We're going to want to work on Shio's Return, which is ebony and leather. And we're going to want to work on the Sacred Grips, which is uh, crystal and cloth. The other thing that we could get a look at that we got, if you can believe it, we got this from, what was it called? The uh, Soroli Assault. Um, we could work on the Milky Way, which would be pretty good given that we're all in on cavalry. That would be feathers and ebony and stone. We're going to be totally tapped on stone, however, <laughs> completely tapped when we make this gosh darn lucky coin. And we'll see how lucky I feel after I've finally made the darn thing. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, like and subscribe. Uh, that would mean a lot to me as a content creator. That way you also can get more optimization and in-depth guides just like this one. If this leveled up your game at all, leave a comment. Let me know what you found interesting. Thanks for all your comments on my previous video offering suggestions about how to use Guan Yu. I think we've definitively answered the question. Guan, not a, sub a straight substitute for Sun Tzu, but still a great contribution to your Sunset Canyon. <laughs> so until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.